Hi everybody, this is Carissa Kingsbury. I am the College and Career Readiness Coordinator and Aspire Coordinator here at Kirk County High School. I am accompanied by Susie Christensen. She's the Director of the COCC here in Prineville, and she's going to talk to us a little bit about the COCC here, what they have to offer, and how they can help you guys in the community, whether you want to go to the COCC here or just want some assistance in applying and other things. So Susie, you can take it away. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Susie Christensen, and I'm the director here at the CFCC campus in Prineville, but I do represent uh, all of our CFCC campuses. We have four campuses. Bend, of course, is our largest campus, uh, Redmond, Madras, and Prineville. Here in Prineville, we've had our campus open to students for the past 10 years, and we're happy to serve, uh, serve our, our um, residents here in Kirk County and uh, in Prineville. Um, and one of the questions I get a lot is, you know what, Susie, I've, I've, I took some classes in Bend, but I need to transfer those to Prineville. I, I took some classes in Madras and I need to transfer those uh, to the Bend campus. I'm gonna take classes there now. So I wanna, I wanna clear up that we're all one, uh, one college. And so no matter where you take classes, all of your uh, classes are at one college, which is, which is at COCC. Um, in Prineville, we offer some really fabulous services for students. You can get your entire AAOT, which is the Associate of Art Oregon Transfer Degree, right here at our Prineville campus without going, um, going to any other campus to receive some of those, uh, those uh, classes to take. That's yeah, a quick trip, not as far going all the way to Bend. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> Um, and, and of course, right now we are all doing online and remote classes, but we're hoping that that will change very soon and we'll have in-person classes again. Uh, we do have some of the prerequisites for, for some of our uh, career and technical programs as well. So if you're not interested in an AAOT, we have all of the prerequisites available for our other programs uh, at, at the, that are available at other campuses. Another question that I get asked a lot is about, you know, hey, it's, um, uh, I, I want to go to go to school, but I don't necessarily want to go to college. And, and often students refer to that as, uh, you know, they want to go to trade school or they want to learn a trade more than they want to go to college. So I want to talk, I want to tell you guys that we have uh, a lot of CTE programs. Those are career and technical education programs, which are a little bit different than our transfer programs. So CTE programs are, are uh, programs that lead to a very specific um, career opportunity. So if you want to be a nurse, you'll go to nursing school, at uh, which we have at COCC. If you want to learn to weld or you want to do some manufacturing, we, we have that opportunity at COCC. Uh, automotive programs, and we have a really great automotive program in Redmond and another one in uh, on our Bend campus for different types of automotive opportunities. We have those, those CTE, those trade programs that are available to our students in, in Central Oregon. And a lot of those are offered um, outside of the Bend campus. Some you do need to go to Bend, but some you don't. We have a really wonderful culinary program. And if you ever uh, are in Bend and need a, a nice treat, there's a great restaurant there that are run by the culinary students at COCC. They have a food truck that they offer uh, for our COCC students, uh, or for the, the COCC students run, and they bring that uh, food truck to different communities so you can taste their delicious food. So if you're not interested in a, in a traditional college experience, COCC also offers a, a trade opportunity. Some of those trades you can get into in as quick as six months. Some of them take as, as long as two years, so it really depends on the trade that you're interested in. But typically, um, they're in that six-month to two-year uh, time frame. Yeah. We also, so Susie, really quick um, on that. So um, if uh, a student is wanting to come and talk to someone there, um, are you guys at the office at all? Or would they have to like schedule an appointment on the phone like to ask questions about any of those programs that you guys offer? It's a really great question. So we are here at the Prineville campus Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And we're uh, available to chat with, uh, with anybody in the community. So parents, students, anybody else in the community who might want to chat with us, we are available. Also, uh, you know, email and phone works uh, for us as well. Again, 8 to 5, Monday through Friday. And we are happy to come in or, or happy to um, answer your questions either on the phone or in person. Great. Awesome.
And then um, also I had a couple questions um, for just, I'm assuming students would probably be curious about this, who knows, but um, so if they have questions and they're like registering and um, you know, they have a question about their financial aid, are they able to ask someone from the CUC campus or should they direct their questions to like the Benton campus financial aid or is it all the same? It's all the same. All so the same. So uh, we at the Prineville campus can answer some of those financial aid questions, especially if they're um, not as in-depth and, and needing to know uh, some personal uh, information about finances. And, and at that point where we cannot answer them at the Prineville campus, we do have a full financial aid department that can answer those questions for students. So we can uh, answer them here and then we can refer to the, to the financial aid department. Um, and we can do that right here in Prineville. We can make that connection and hand you the phone and say and, and have that handoff so that uh, the, the financial aid office knows exactly what your question is regarding financial aid. Yeah, it's nice to have someone to be able to kind of help direct them if they, you know, new to the process, trying to figure out what next steps to take. It's great to have someone local that can help you with that. It's really awesome. Um, so Susie, what would you say like are some of the reasons why um, students want to go to CFCC. So like, what are some of like, you talked about a lot of the highlights in general, but what do you think helps you guys stand apart from other community colleges? So there are a couple things that we hear often from our students. The first is it's close to home and, and uh, students often really enjoy that uh, aspect that it's close to home. They can still, if they choose, uh, live at home and not bear the expense of having to rent an apartment and, and um, buy food and all those things. So that is one of the big uh, pluses to attending COCC. And especially if you're here in Prineville and we have all the services here at our Prineville campus that they offer um, at all of the other campuses. So you can get those services right here without having to go to Bend. Uh, travel is a big um, barrier for a lot of students because it is an hour each way to Bend. And if you have a Monday, Wednesday class or a Tuesday, Thursday class, that's a lot of hours on the road to, to get to Bend or to get to another location. So students are really happy that, uh, that a community college is right here in their hometown and they're able to not bear the expense of, of travel. Um, another big one for our students is cost. The cost at a community college is much, much, much less than going to a university. And especially if you plan to apply for the Oregon Promise, which is good at all 17 community colleges, which is a really fabulous way to uh, pay for your college education. Um, you know, our, our, co our college expenses are just so much less than at a university. So those are some of the big ones that, that students um, are often telling us that they appreciate the most. Uh, and also here at the Prineville campus, just in general at our smaller campuses, students like the smaller class sizes. It is more reminiscent of what they're used to. Instead of going to a big school and being in a lecture hall with 50 students or with 500 students, you're probably going to be in a classroom with 10 to 25 students. So it's a, it's a much um, different experience. And for our, our folks who've grown up in Prineville, like me, uh, they, they typically appreciate that um, the ability to have those smaller class sizes, get to know their instructors better, get to know fellow students students better uh, and just have that uh, smaller college experience. Yeah, I think that's true because we've even in the past in towards of schools like U of O or something and they had, you know, those, you know, lecture halls that are so big and you could have hundreds and hundreds of students in there and you can almost guarantee that your teacher's not exactly going to know who you are, <laughs> you know, right. and so sometimes these smaller class sizes, even in Bend with COCC, you can come in here and have a smaller class and be able to get more like one-on-one -on -one help from your teacher. I think that's a great opportunity and it's nice because you really can get, you know, your associate's degree here. You can get so many of those classes classes out of the way and not have to go all the way to Bend or you could you know either way but it's nice to be able to have that small town kind of like small class size feel I think it's good and it's a smaller campus to find your classes too which is awesome it's the one building <laughs> easier to find everything than sometimes in the Bend one you're searching <laughs> I've done that <laughs> and parking is not an issue at the Prineville campus if you've ever heard the parking Ooh. problem at COCC it's oh. not a problem at the Prineville campus yes that is a good point I didn't even <laughs> think about that the parking up there can get a little treacherous <laughs> with trying to find a spot and get your class on time. That is a really good point. So um, 
Susie, when students are thinking of applying to COCC, what would you say um, are some of the best like tips you have for like the process on how to get started and then what to follow up with? So, so go to our uh, website, cocc.edu, and my favorite part of the, uh, of the website is in the upper right-hand corner, there's a search bar, and just search for application. Uh, the other thing that you can search for is getting started. So either of those are going to take you to a place where you can, um, where you can get uh started in the process. So that's that's my first tip is use that search bar because any college website has, they all have a lot of uh, important information. So use that search bar uh, or that's that search tool. Uh, you'll wanna fill out the, the application sooner rather than later, not because it takes a long time for you to get accepted and admitted to COCC, but because there are quite a few other steps in the process uh, with financial aid, um, uh, placement assessments, um, uh, advising. So you want to get those things done early. And my uh, my advice for incoming students, so so our um, seniors who are graduating and going to come to COCC, I would, if I were you, I would get those steps done before you graduate. Because what I have found in my years at COCC is once you graduate and you leave the high school, you're not really thinking that much over the summer about what do I need to do for, uh, for COCC. And then you show up on our doorstep, you know, middle of September and say, I, you know, I don't know what I'm going to, what, what was, I? I didn't know I was supposed to do those things. So, so get that stuff done early. Um, it was a really good uh, tip for our, for our incoming students. Yeah, and I do, uh, that's a good point. Your getting started part on the COCC website is really great because it really does give you step by step on that. Um, I've directed students to go there to apply. It says, you know, number one is apply for admissions and then it, number two, number three, what to do. And then like even a, um, setting up an advising appointment, they have little buttons right there. It's all right there. And it's nice when you're wondering what your next step is or I've done this, I can't remember what it said. I don't know where that email went. <laughs> you can sometimes just go there and find that and it can be really helpful for going through that process. I do love how you guys organized that to be able to help students differentiate what they need to do next. Um, so Susie, I think you've given us a really good um, like overview of TUCC. So if students have questions or if you have any last thoughts for them, what would you say those are for you know the last little bit of this? So I would say, uh, no matter your journey after high school, start early. So if you're going to come to CSCC, come talk to us early. If you have other plans, um, talk to those universities or colleges or trade schools early, because there's a lot um, to the process of becoming a student. So, so don't wait to the last minute. And always reach out for help. There are people available to help you. Don't think that you're on this journey alone. Um, I'm here to help uh, our front desk desk agent Tracy is always happy to help. So there's always somebody here during regular business hours that can help you with your journey, with your process. So don't struggle alone. Reach out for help. Definitely. I think those are great points. And students, again, if you need help, reach out to me, reach out to COCC. Um, Susie did make a great point is a lot of seniors will either wait or um, get some of it done and not the whole thing and wait. And I've had seniors come back in September and say, help me, help me, because they're trying to figure out the last little bit that they forgot to do to be able to go in the, in the fall. So please reach out. Please ask questions. We're here to help you. It's our job to encourage you and help you in your path of planning. So thank you, Susie, for joining us today and telling us a little bit about COCC. And again, if you have questions, I'll have some contact info at the end of this video um, to reach out to COCC or myself here at the high school. Thanks, Susie. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. This is Carissa Kingsbury. I am the College and Career Readiness and Aspire Coordinator here at Kirk County High School. I am accompanied today by Suzanne Saw. She's with the PEO Chapter DJ for the scholarship representative, and she's going to tell us a little bit about that scholarship and what they have to offer for our students. So, Suzanne, you can go ahead and take it away and let us know a little bit about the scholarship. Okay. Um, our organization was... Um established in the mid 1800s. So we've been around for a long time and it has always been to uh, promote the education of women. And we offer uh, different kinds of scholarships for women. So that's our primary emphasis. And we do fundraisers 
And last year we gave um, one $1,000 scholarship to Crook County High School to a young lady and she's doing well. Um, there are a number of different scholarships that after you get into school, there are some, some other directions you can go, but it's uh, to, to start out, we, are off, we don't know how many scholarships we will be offering Crook County High School, but hopefully several. Yeah, and it's nice to be able to have the opportunity that even after graduation, you can potentially be able to get more scholarship money to be able to help you um, for your uh, education beyond then. So that's great that you guys offer that. So um, Suzanne, so what are some of the things that you look for in applicants? Is there anything that you would suggest that would help a student stand out compared to maybe another student? Well, we're of course, we're always looking at the um, academics and we look at... Um, uh, extracurricular activities um, and um, what what your uh, goal is in life if you have one yet <laughs> you know I know it takes a while sometimes so yeah definitely um, sometimes it's like you're switching back and forth but either way right. it's good I I'm did <laughs> <laughs> I did too <laughs> Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think that um, I feel like you guys love to see, you know, these students, they do a activities chart kind of talking about their volunteer history and past work history and kind of showing you guys a big picture of um, who they are as a student, both academically and just in the community. I feel like that's always a good thing for them, for you guys to be able to give that information. Um, and we're also looking for financial need. Yes, financial need. Yes. So, um, Tell us a little bit about that. Like you, you're wanting them to show like what they're needing to pay and all of that and what their leftover balances are and things like that. Yes. yes. And yeah. um, you know, what, how this money would be used, but um, actually the money goes directly to the school. So it's, it doesn't come into, to the student's hands. Yes. Yeah, so usually the students will have to show that they've enrolled or registered yes. for the courses and yes. then it'll be sent to the school, which is good for them to be able to keep on track with figuring out how much they have left to pay, which is great. Um, so have you guys noticed any um, common mistakes or things you wish students would have done more of in the past um, when they're applying for your scholarships or just any suggestions for them as they apply? Hmm. I don't think so. Um, actually, we've only given one scholarship to Kirk County High School because we're uh, quite a new chapter. And so we're still uh, feeling our way into the scholarship territory. But uh, we, well, we, we appreciate it. We appreciate the money <laughs> for the kids. I know they do. Either way, even if it's just been one so far, I think that's a good start. <laughs> yeah. One for Cook County, but we gave uh, four other scholarships last year to other people around too. So Yes, great. Well, I think that that is great. So students, um, if you're looking to apply for this scholarship, if you have any questions, you can find this on our Kerr County High School website um, under the PEO chapter GJ. Um, and that will give you some information about their scholarships. And it's also due in April. So keep that in mind that that'll get turned in to me um, for us to be able to get you in for that. And if you have any questions, please reach out and we'd love to answer those questions. And um, Suzanne, that was great. Is there any last things you wanna maybe note for them or I think we covered quite a bit. I can't think of anything right now, so. <laughs> okay, great, perfect. Well, I think that that is great. So thank you so much, Suzanne, for joining us today and students apply for scholarships. We wanna help you get some funding for your uh, education beyond high school. Yes, we do. Okay, thank you. Thank you.